A new science-based target for the telecom industry includes emissions trajectory reductions for mobile, fixed, and data center operators to meet the ambitious Paris Agreement goal of limiting global warming. Accordingly, the ICT industry is taking urgent action in response to what is being called a climate emergency. And here to discuss is John Fry, Senior Technologist, IT Efficiency and Sustainability at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Jeff Edlin, Chief Technology Officer, Communications Technology Group at HPE, and Jenny Panhorst, Vice President, Network and Edge Group at Intel. Jenny, I want to start with you. We hear a lot about distant net zero targets, but what's happening right now to reduce CO2 emissions? Um, if we look at um, use of Intel Xeon, Intel Atom, uh, Intel FPGA products that are used across the RAN, across the edge and the core of network infrastructure, including ways that we're using these products in um, traditional radio access networks, as well as open RAN and virtualized RAN. While we advance the, the capabilities in our products, um, advanced instruction sets, um, other acceleration that's integrated into the platforms, we're able to improve um, the overall performance per watt and overall energy efficiency of our of solutions that are built with these next generation products. Um, so if we look specifically at, at some examples, the upcoming fourth generation Intel Xeon scalable processor, which is codenamed Sapphire Rapids, is going to be able to deliver more than two times capacity gains for virtualized RAN workloads by comparison to the prior generation. And it provides this gain without increasing the power envelope uh, of, the, of the platforms at all. And so really provides an opportunity for operators to increase the amount of capacity that they're able to deliver in their networks while maintaining um, consistent power. Um, so, you know, it, it's really essential that we continue to invest, but we also know that, that none of this can be achieved without partnership and collaboration across the industry and contribution to a number of industry bodies, um, as well as just partnership directly with other companies across the value chain. And so, you know, our, our collaboration with HP is a great example of where we're, we're fellow travelers in the technology industry, really trying to take a leadership role in driving sustainability objectives. And John, what's your perspective on where we are in reducing CO2 emissions? HPE has been focused on reducing CO2 equivalent emissions for almost two decades as well with a series of reduction goals. And in 2021, we accelerated our commitment to becoming a net zero enterprise across our entire value chain, scopes one, two, and three to 2040. And this commitment is backed up with a roadmap to net zero and a new suite of science-based targets that are consistent with the one and a half degree pathway. And in fact, this net zero commitment is one of the world's first science-based target initiative approved net zero goals. And how we're going to achieve those goals is first by some interim steps by 2030. And the first is reducing our direct and energy related emissions of scopes one and two by 70% from our baseline. And including in that is sourcing 100% of our energy from renewable uh, generation. Secondly, we're going to help our customers by leveraging our as a service strategy, HPE GreenLake, an energy efficiency portfolio to partner with them to reduce their own emissions by 42% over that baseline. And finally, we'll continue to uh, work through our commitment to help 80% of our suppliers by spend set their own science-based targets. And working through that interim goal will lead us to achieving net zero by 2040 as we reduce our entire global footprint by 90%. But these goals don't drive all the actions, accountability does. So one of the things that we've done this year is required all of the vice presidents and above in our company to take climate training so that they understand the climate implications of the businesses that they run. And starting next year, our executive committee members will have part of their bonus calculation based on them setting low carbon roadmaps for the parts of the business of HPE that they run. Another piece of this is since 65% of our footprint is when our customers use our products, it behooves us to help our customers improve their efficiency, which also lowers HPE's carbon footprint as well. So about 50% of our technology portfolio has intentional low carbon and efficiency benefits. 
And then when our customers trans transfer to GreenLake as well, GreenLake has the opportunity to help them reduce over provisioning, to increase utilization levels, and cut their energy spend by over 30% over a five-year period. We share our sustainable IT expertise and point of view and the white papers and executive guides that we've written to help our customers transition. And finally, at the end of life, when our customers are making tech refreshes or transitioning equipment, HPE Financial Services Asset Upcycling Service allows us to take those customer assets back to refurbish them if possible and give them a second life, and if not, recycle them in a responsible manner. And through that entire process, then give the customer a circular economy report, which allows the customer to see the carbon implications of that end of use service. So these are just some of the ways that we're helping across our value chain drive a lower carbon economy. 